Factoring Polynomials Review! Dun dun dun! I know, it's everybody's favorite part of grade 10 math. Factoring polynomials. And here it is again. Guess what, folks? You're going to have to really love factoring polynomials because that is a good portion of the quadratics unit that we're, we are about to embark on. So let's, uh, let's uh, remind ourselves of what this actually means. Factoring. Factoring means just um, breaking it down into, um, breaking down some number or some expression into things that multiply. So for example, if I, I'm just going to go off to the side here. If I'm looking for factors of 6, I'm saying that the factors of 6 are 1 and 6 or 2 and 3. Because I take 2 and I multiply it by 3 and I get 6. I take 1 and multiply it by 6 and I get 6 as well. So what we're doing is we're just breaking it down into smaller expressions that are multiplied. Polynomials, it's not polynomials or polynomials. Uh, <laughs> oh, I crack myself up. It's polynomials, which means a many termed expression. And you'll notice that they're expressions, not equations, because if you would have something that looks like that, that is an equation. But there are no equal signs within an expression. So that's how we know it's an expression. So just to remind ourselves of the different ways of factoring, we can factor out the greatest common factor, the GCF. And we're going to have um, two kind of uh, quadratics. So uh, simple quadratic. Okay, that's where a equals 1. So when I say a, it means the coefficient or the numbery bit in front of the, uh, the squared term. And we have complex quadratics, which is when a does not equal 1. And the last that we are going to, um, the last that we are going to be dealing with today is difference of squares. So something like a squared minus b squared equals a plus b a minus b. All right. So first things first, let's look at this first example. Now I'm noticing that there are only two. Usually in a quadratic we have three. Okay, so first, the first thing that I always want to look for is the greatest common factor. Now the greatest common factor with a numbery bit between 2 and 4 is going to be 2. The, and when I say numbery bit, I mean coefficient. That's the, it's the mathematical way of saying it. And the greatest common factor between the x squared and the x is simply going to be x. So when I factor out a 2x, meaning if I take the, the, the term in the original thing, in the original uh, expression, and I divide it by 2x, what do I have left over? Well, 2 divided by 2 is 1, and x squared divided by x is simply x. Plus, if I go 4x divided by 2x, I'm going to simply be left with 2. And here we have it, folks. We have this term, or this factor, multiplied by this factor. And the way that we can check to see if we actually got it right is we can, um, our little check, you don't have to do this. Um, and in fact, in grade uh, 11, you don't get many marks for actually factoring. It's just a skill that is expected to be uh, known how to do already. Uh, but if you just wanted to check for yourself, you can uh, use the happy little rainbow. So I can go 2x times x plus 2. Uh, brr, brr. So I'm like 2x squared plus 4x. Yes, that is the same thing as the original question. So we have a very happy camper. Woot woot. Okay, um, this guy right here, um, we have a quadratic with three terms. So it's a quadratic trinomial. And remember, I, I don't know if you remember the trick from last year, but you need to have two numbers that multiply out to negative 8 and add up to negative 2. So I'm going to open up my brackets like this. Boop, boop. 
I'm going to have x and I'm going to have x. So two numbers that multiply out to 8 and uh, add up to negative 2, well, I know it's going to be 4. And it's going to be 2 because 2 times 4 is 8. And the negative is going to go with uh, 4. Positive is going to go with 2 because if I say negative 4 plus 2, I get negative 2. And that's how fast I should be able to uh, factor polynomials, uh, especially when a equals 1. This is an example of bar simple because a equals 1. Okay, sometimes uh, sometimes people like to do factoring by grouping, but when a equals 1, it's much simpler just to, um, just to know the little trick. What about this one? Okay, so I have two numbers that multiply out to positive 9 and add up to negative 6. Okay, well I have, uh, when we have factors of 9, I have, so 9 is 1 and 9. Nope, none of that combination would get to negative 6. What about 3 and 3? Heck yes, because negative 3 times negative 3 is 9, and negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6. So what I have here is so I'm opening up two brackets, x and x, minus 3 and minus 3. Hold the phone there, there. We have a common base of x minus 3, but we have two of them multiplied by each other. So we have x minus 3 squared. This is the precalculus answer. This is not simplified enough. So remember, whenever you see common bases like that, let's clean it up and uh, put squared. Whenever you get to a question like this, like, first of all, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have a A that is not, that is not a 1. The first thing that you always want to check is if there is a greatest common factor, because maybe there is a greatest common factor. I know that negative 4 goes into negative 4, yes, once. Negative 4 does go into negative 16, yes, four times. Does negative 4 go into 128? Yes, it does. 32 times. So let's factor out that negative 4. And now it does something funky to all of the, the, um, the signs. Because if I say negative 4 squared divided by negative 4, it's just t squared. Oh, sorry, negative 4t squared. I misspoke there. And if I say negative 16t divided by negative 4, it's going to be plus 4t. And if I say 128 divided by negative 4, okay, I'm going to get negative here, and it's going to be 32. Look at that. Beautiful. I can take, I can factor out a 4 even, uh, evenly from all three of the terms. And I'm actually here now left with a simple, simple quadratic, because a equals 1. So I'm going to make sure that I don't forget to write down this 4 here. I'm going to open up two brackets. Don't forget t, oh sorry, not t squared, <laughs> t and t. So two numbers that multiply out to negative 32 and add up to 4. Think about it. Think about it. I know one of them has to be negative and one of them has to be positive because they have to multiply out to 32. So if I take a positive 8 and a negative 4, ta-da! Perfect. 8 minus 4 is 4. 8 times negative 4 is 32. We are good. Now, I can also write it for uh, negative 4, t minus 4, t plus 8. That's it. I just switched the order here. That's totally fine. In general, we keep the, the constants, the numbery bits, out, uh, out front. But we can switch. Because if I would say 2 times 3 equals... Well, it equals 6. What about 3 times 2? I've changed the factors, just as I have here. Is 3 times 2 6? Heck, yes, it is 6. Okay, so you can switch the order of the factors because it's all multiplication. And multiplication is something we call commutative, the same forwards and backwards. All right. All right, my children, the day has come. We are going to get a complex quadratic. Why? Because a does not equal 1. And if I try to factor out a 3, 
Yes, 3 goes into 3. No, 3 doesn't go into 13, neither does it 10. So we do have a true complex here because we cannot factor out a greatest common factor. The way that this changes here is I need two numbers that multiply out to negative 30. Why negative 30? Negative 10 times 3 is negative 30. And they add up to negative 13. And, and I'm just going to change the color here. Why negative 13? Because of this term. Okay? So let's think about it. Negative 30. I, part of me wants to say 3 and 10, right? But if I say negative 3 times negative 10, which will be what adds up to 30, that is positive 30, or uh, negative 3 minus 10 is negative 13. But if I say negative 3 times negative 10, that is actually positive 30, so that one doesn't work. But what about negative 15 and positive 2? Ding, 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 ding! Yes, absolutely. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down 3x squared, and then I'm going to split up this middle term here. Minus 15x plus 2x minus 10. And now I'm going to take, uh, take it two at a time. Okay, I'm going to first deal with my first two terms, and then I'm going to deal with my second two terms. So, I need to factor out a greatest common factor from the first two here. So the numbery bits, the greatest common factor is a 3. The lettery bits, the greatest common factor is x. So what do I have left here? I'm just going to switch the color here so you can see. 3x squared divided by 3x is simply x. Negative 15x divided by 3x is negative 5. All right. Hopefully we see this again soon. And I'm going to say plus. Why plus? Because I have a plus in front of the 2. A lot of people, oh, well that looks like it changed color there, but that is, that is actually, ah, please don't change. Okay, good. That is actually the reason why we have plus. Oh no, it just did again. But I hope you guys, I hope you guys see what I did there. Because some people forget to write this operation at all. And when people forget to write an operation, it makes it look like it's multiplication, when indeed it is not. So the greatest common factor between 2x and negative 10 is going to be 2. And what do we have left over? Oh man, I'm going to change to green. I sure hope we have x minus 5. So 2x divided by 2 is x. 10 divi negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. Da 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 da! Thank you, mathematical gods. That was a real nice gift because it means that I have factored it properly because a common, the factor is uh, the same both, uh, you know, with both. So I have x minus 5, and then what I have is the, um, I factored out the x minus 5. When I do that, I get 3x plus 2. Why? Because I'm factoring out an x minus 5. When I divide 3x times x minus 5 by x minus 5, I'm left with 3x. And when I divide 2 times x minus 5 divided by x minus 5, I get 2. So I'm just factoring out a common factor. And unfortunately, well, not really unfortunately, but... Algebraically, it's a little bit more intense. I'm factoring out um, a polynomial here, okay, a polynomial factor. All right. So this one, we have another complex. Because 4 goes into 12, yes, but 4 does not go into 9. So that means that we have to have two numbers that multiply out to 4 times 9, which is 36, but positive. And it has to add up to 12. So the way that I sometimes do it is I write down a visual 36. I just start with all the with all the factors. So 1 and 36, 2 and 18. Does that get me to the 12? No, nope. it gets me to 16, but not 12. Um, and really, it has to be positive. They both have to be positive. So that would get me to 20. 
Um, <clears throat> 3 times 12, no. 4 times 9, no, that gets me to 13. 5 times, burnt, nothing. Ooh, but wait, 6 times 6 is 36, and 6 plus 6 is 12. Ta-da! Beautiful. So, I'm going to write 4x squared. Nothing happens to that, that first term, but this middle term we're going to split up. So we're going to say plus 6x plus 6x, because we're officially not really doing anything. We're just splitting it up so we can factor uh, a common factor out, plus 9. All right, so just looking at that for those first two terms here, common factor is going to be 2x. Uh, 4x squared divided by 2x is going to be 2x. 6x divided by 2 is going to be plus 3. Now, I hope in my heart of hearts that when I factor out a common factor from the next two, that my uh, my factor that I find, or the, uh, yeah, the, the uh, factored bit is going to be 2x plus 3. Plus common factor between 6x and 9 is going to be 3. 6x divided by 3 is 2x plus, oh, 9 divided by 3 is indeed 3. Great. So I'm going to factor out a 2x plus 3 from this uh, expression. And what do I have left is going to be, oh, 2x plus 3. Look at that. 2x plus 3 squared. Amazing. What about this one? This one just has two terms. It's not a trinomial. Whenever you see two terms, you think, hmm, could this be a difference of squares? And indeed it is, because we have subtraction. We have a perfect square, perf square, and we have another perfect square, perf square. So literally all we do here is open up two brackets, m, m, 7, 7, plus, minus. That's it. The square root of the first term is the first part of the, uh, first part of each bracket. The uh, square root of the second term is the second part of the bracket. One of them is plus, one of them is minus. Then This one looks a little bit tougher, but it literally is the same thing. So the square root of 81b squared is going to be 9b. 9b. The square root of 64 is 8. One's going to be a plus, one's going to be a minus. Why don't I spice it up a bit? Why don't I say that this one is minus and this one's plus? Because remember, multiplication is commutative so that you can do it that way. Uh, I hope that you guys found that uh, helpful little review. Um, you can flip over to the other side and there are lots of questions that you can practice on. If you need more practice, come and find me. And if you want to see an answer key, also come and find me.